All right, welcome to this video. And inside of this video, I'm going to be discussing a bit of a topic that is going to be straying a little bit left field from the usual, from the business, from the family, from the relationships. And I think this is actually more important. The reasons why I shoot this video is simply because I want to create an archive of videos and knowledge inside of my brain that hopefully I can pass on to Atlas and my future sons and my future son-in-laws. And hopefully you guys benefit because you're out there going, hey, Lynn, I'm, I'm along the same path. I'm along the same journey. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And hopefully there's somebody that, to guide me there that helps me live a life that's full, that lives, helps me live a life of freedom of choice. That yes, I can make some money and I can have that personal power to, to be able to make some money and become financially free. But ultimately, where do we even begin? Now I'm going to go a few years back. For the majority of my life, for the first 23 years of my life, I had no personal power. That means I had no personal intuition to listen to what I wanted to do. For the first 23 years of my life, I listened to what my parents wanted me to do. I listened to what I should do from other people. I went to school. I then graduated and went to university studying physiotherapy. I then graduated physiotherapy. I did work for three months. It wasn't until I hit about 22 where I just sort of sat there going, what the fuck am I actually doing with my life? And the reasons why it actually hit me hard was because from the ages of 16 to 22, I was a personal trainer and I was doing very well for myself as a personal trainer while studying as well. In that time, I was pulling in about $2,000 a week in Australian dollars. That's about $100,000 a year. And the majority of it was cash. So as you can imagine, I was doing financially pretty well for an 18, 19, 20 year old. After I graduate physiotherapy and I'm listening to my parents, I'm listening to what I should do. I'm listening to, hey, like, you know, I should, become a doctor, I should study at university because I need to be respected. And my parents had great intentions for me. And I'm not, not here to say, hey, like that was a bad decision. It's all they knew at that very moment in time and it's the best decision that they could come up with. Having left Vietnam, coming here on a boat to escape the war, raising six children and going, hey, we need you to actually study hard to earn a good job, to secure your financial future, or to secure your future financially, and then to become respected because they were experiencing the other side. Generally what happens, what I start to recognize is that people, once they experience the pain, they actually flip over to the other side and go, well, if, if I'm not getting respected, if I'm not getting, if I'm not getting uh, the money that I want, if people aren't respecting me, then, then they completely flip it on the other uh, side of the coin and go, hey, this is what we need to do. And in that moment in time, my parents had every right to process the things the way they process. And here's how it worked out. So as I'm 22, I finish four years of physiotherapy. I'm coming out with like university debt, thanks to about $40,000 in debt. And at the time, I'm now a graduate. I'm now working my first year. I'm now for working my first three months. And I sit there going, I've just spent four years doing physiotherapy. I'm now making $55,000 a year. That equates to like $4,000 a month. After tax, that equates to about $2,800 a month. And I'm sitting there going, what the hell? I'm sitting in the side of a room, massaging people. It's a small cubicle, three by three, whatever, four by three meters, got a bed. People come in. I see about eight patients a day. My knuckles are hurting from just massaging people. And shout out to all the masseuses out there, the remedial masseuses that actually use their knuckles. It's one of the hardest things actually to like go back to back on massages all day. Like if you think about any other services like hairdressers, nail salons, etc. I think massages, are one of the toughest things to do. And so I'm sitting there and I have this epiphany and this is where I break out of, out of the mold because I'm like, I, I have listened to my parents this whole entire time. I've gone to school, I've graduated, I've become a physiotherapist and now I'm making $55,000 a year inside of a cubicle and I'm fucking miserable. And as I'm doing this, I kind of push through every day. I kind of go through month one, kind of go through month two. I'm traveling from, from places to places. I'm driving pretty far as well. So it's like to cover the expenses of this, I'm probably not even making any money. As I think about it, as I think about it now, as a 34 year old processing this 12 years ago, I'm like, I'm not making any money. Cause like petrol's expensive. I've got to pay for rent. I'm not, I'm not going to survive as a physiotherapist. The reality is my parents didn't actually understand this. That, Back as a 22 year old, I was making more money as a personal trader. I didn't have any of this huge debt. It was things that I was actually enjoying, like how to body build, how to power lift, how to build muscle. This is all cool shit that I was actually enjoying. Physio, I, I didn't give a fuck. Like people would come in, I'll stick needles in them, I'd massage their knots, etc., and like they'd, they'd go. So it's about three months in and I get to this place and I'm just like, fuck, it's this, it's this boiling kind of sense of boiling sensation, this kind of anger, this resentment, this pressure inside of my head where I'm just like, oh, fuck this. 
And I've got all my supervisors. I can see them coming in every single day. There's like, there's a 40 year old physio and he was my boss, he was my manager. And he's looking miserable as fuck. He's been in the game for 10 years and I'm just looking at him and going, that's, that's what's in it for me. But back in the days, I didn't even have this level of awareness. I was just like, oh yeah, I'll just be like him one day, I can manage people. And then I started to recognize, well, how much does he get paid? He gets paid 80 grand. That's 10 years in. I get to month three and I'm like, I'm out of here. And it's not just because of the money. By all means, there are so many factors here. It's not because of the money. The money is shit, number one. And the number two, it's the level of enjoyment and the misery, the energy that you're around. You're in a place where there's no energy. It's not just about the people. It's like the vibrational energy that you feel. You just feel like, this is dead. Why am I here? Like, why am I wasting my life? And I just remember distinctly, I'd go be physio. I would then finish up. I'd go work as a PT. I'd walk around in Melbourne City. I'd walk around in Melbourne City. I'd look up and I'd look up at all the buildings. I'd look up at all these nice cars. I'd look and go, how the fuck are people affording any of this? Like my one goal was just going, let's look at all these expensive buildings. Look at all these, how, how do people actually, exp like I'm busting my balls here. I'm, I'm working two jobs. I finished as a physio. I listened to my parents. I'm working as a PT, I, 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 but I'm still fucking lost. And none of what I seem to be doing, like I knew I just wasn't gonna be a personal trainer forever. I knew I was like, gonna do something beyond that, but that, was a really good seven, eight years of my life to keep me afloat, to help me like get out there, meet people. And it paid extremely well. Like I just couldn't have found another job that paid and gave me that flexibility of, of working, making money. But I knew that there had to be something more. And so it got to this point where it was boiling inside and I just said to myself, fuck, I have to leave. And one of the hardest parts about leaving is that you leave everything behind. And people, people don't leave because there's so much on the line that they've built towards. There's four years of physiotherapy, like training that I'd done. There's university degree that I'm gonna have to be left behind. There's this like part of the status group that I'm, I'm just going rogue now, I'm no longer a physio. Like when, you've, when you graduate as a physio, there's people that just admire you and go, oh my God, you're really smart. You did four years. Not that I thought physios were smart at all because most of the physios got into physio because they couldn't make it into med school. There's all this baggage that you're leaving behind. On top of that, there's a resistance of your family wondering why, what you're not doing. And in my family, I'm the last of six kids. My sister's a physio. I've got two other sisters that are dentists. I've got an optometrist and my brother did actuary. So I don't even know what the fuck that is, but it's like really hard mathematics and now it does stocks. So now I'm kind of leaving this mold and, but there's something boiling inside that I can't fucking do this. The hardest part for me was to literally tell my parents, hey, I'm not gonna do this anymore. And I think that that brought a level of shame to them, a level of embarrassment that they wouldn't tell me, but that, that's how they felt. Like when, when their friends would ask, well, what, what's Lynn doing? They're like, I don't know. They'd have to make up some shit. I, I would say, oh, he's doing some physio, he's doing something. And so there was this good moment in time from the time that I was 22 to 25 to, to figure my shit out, like just to figure out what the fuck I was gonna do. And so what did I start doing? I started learning about digital marketing. I had some people that were starting these masterminds and they were going, hey, we can teach you how to make money. Some were good, some were not good. But in that moment in time, I'd had to begin to trust myself. I knew that I couldn't rely on what other people were telling me because it was like the blind leading the blind. In that moment, I made that distinction. And I'm like, this is the blind leading the blind. And no matter what, I'm going to feel like I'm not aligned. I'm going to feel like this isn't not so much my purpose because I didn't really give a shit about purpose. I just felt like this didn't feel right. The reasons why I bring this up is because had I not left in that moment in time, I'd still be a physio. I'd probably be miserable. I'd probably have my own practice right now. I'd probably have way more expenses. I'd still be broke. Like the thing that I recognize right now is that holy shit, owning your own practice is like the echelon of like being a dentist, being a physio, being a car, you own your own practice and it's like, oh, you're, you're a big boy. You've got your own business. But in reality, owning my own practice meant that I'd actually make more money, make less money because I'd have way more expenses. I'd take on a huge amount of stress and I didn't recognize that in order to actually get rich, that I wouldn't need to own one practice. I would need to own a hundred practices at, at scale. And the only way that I could get rich isn't to become great at physio. Now with the skills that I have and the knowledge that I have is actually become really good at systems, management, marketing, and being able to duplicate and leverage and pull myself out from being the technician. And being rich in today's world would literally be if I could franchise that and then I could get hundreds of other physios to come in and own a franchise, all of which they wouldn't understand they would be poor and that the only people that actually make money is the person that owns the franchise. That's the person that gets really rich because they've got the greatest amount of leverage and sure, they might argue that, hey, the franchisee makes 120,000 a year or 200,000 a year, but the level of stress, the level of pressure, the level of skills on that person, they're almost a glorified manager. And the only reasons why it works is because they feel like they own that place. 
I'll get into that in another topic. And I didn't understand. Because I just thought, hey, as a business owner, like back then as a 22 year old, I'm like, shit, if I become a business, I'll be rich. And that's all I need to get to. And yet that, that's the dead end, that you're not rich as a business owner. You open your own practice. Sure, you're making 100, 150, maybe $250,000 profit. And that's doing really well. Profit is after. Like the revenue could be 500,000 and after you pay your expenses, do you have 250? But 250 for that level of stress, that level of pressure, shit. It's even worse. You might as well go be really good and work a job. And then at least you have your weekends. At least you have some sort of balance inside of your life. So that was the paradigm that I grew up in. And it wasn't until 2020, oh, not even 2020, it was 2014, 2013 that I left. 2013, 2014, 2015 were the years of just self-discovery. Of like, fuck, I'm going to go figure out how to make money online. This guy's telling me he's going to make money fast. I'm going to go get sucked into that. And I got sucked into that. I paid money and I learned. And I'm like, holy shit, this isn't. This isn't how to make money. This is like a pyramid scheme. Okay, you go on to the next thing. You start to learn like digital marketing. Okay, cool. I'm going to offer digital marketing services and I'm going to run this thing, this little agency to run ads for Facebook for, for dentists. And I did that. And then I tested it and I, I was like, holy shit, I'm not equipped for this because I can market for them. I can sell them. I have no idea how to fulfill. This is a shit house. Then you go in there and your friends start telling you, hey, they've got this Pilates studio and you begin to start a, a partnership with them. And then you're like, oh, fuck it, let's do a partnership. And then now, now you're, you're a part owner in a Pilates studio, you open shit up and now you re recognize you, you lose freedom and there's not a lot of money. And so this, this, it was this journey of just doing shit. And it's the journey of just doing shit that builds your intuition, that builds your compass, that builds your knowledge, that builds your depth of view, of, of view, depth of view, so that you can start to recognize what's good, what's not good. And so this video comes today because you might be stuck, you might be watching shit on YouTube, you might be having parents that telling you what to do, you might have friends out there that tell you what to do and you don't even know, you're fucking just completely lost. Where do you start? Every man I believe needs to take this leap of faith to build their own intuition, to build their own compass. Because eventually they'll come to a point where you as a man, whether or not you have kids right now, you will have children. You will become 40, you will have a wife, you'll have kids, and at some level, you'll need to lead them. The problem is, you can't lead them if you can't lead yourself. The problem is, you can't lead them, and you can't build a happy family, you can't build a relationship when you don't recognize, shit, other people around me that I've been listening to, they don't even know what the fuck's happening. And you'll start to understand that this personal power, this compass inside, this intuition to listen, whether or not you're fucking wrong. Like there are so many mistakes that I made along the way with all the shit that I did that I just felt like a loser. I'm like, I'm never going to figure this out. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just, I'm fucking never going to figure this out, right? But every, with every loss, when I look back now, it actually just gave me perspective to go, all right, let's go again. And let's go again. And if there's one piece of advice that I truly believe, if I can get this across to you, is that you have to keep a curious mind and you have to just back yourself to go. And whether or not you win or lose, it just counts as a win. Whether if you win you fucking win big. Fantastic. If you lose, there's a very high chance that you will lose. There's a very high chance that you'll make it and then you'll lose it. But in that moment, you'll get knowledge and you'll build your own personal compass. And it's this thing that requires courage. Like it, it was very difficult for me to leave four year degree status, disappoint my parents, to, to, to go into this unknown. But inside of that, that's where you really start to find yourself. That's where you find your voice. That's where you find your compass. That's where you figure out what you want, what you don't want. And then on the flip side, it opens up the world. And then you start to recognize how little people actually get to decide what they want rather than how often they get to listen to other people and the things that we're told. So if there's a little lesson here for Dave, I can share some wisdom for you. If you're watching this, like, man, I'm, I'm lost. I'm scared. I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I don't know who to listen to. The reality is you need to start building and listening to yourself. And how you listen to yourself is you just do have to take that leap of faith and start. Start by doing something that you want to do. Test it out. Try it. Who cares if you fail? Who cares if you win? The craziest part is nobody cares except you. The craziest part about this journey is that you could make a fool of yourself and nobody gives a shit. No one. Your family and your friends will give a shit for a day. They'll talk shit about you. But at the end of the day, they'll move on. And maybe they'll, they'll linger because that's all. They're, they're so little that they, they, they just have to hold you down because they see you, you rising. But nobody cares. I want to stress this again. There could be massive, massive events. Kim Kardashian sex tape out there on the internet. Nobody cares. It's gone. The next thing. Then it, it, we're just, the world is moving so fast onto the next thing that you have to understand nobody really cares about this except the people around you that are so small-minded. And that's what you need to break out of. So that being said, I hope this lesson helped. I apologize if it was long-winded. 
But more importantly, what will you do to go out there to start building your personal compass so that you can get your own perspective, so that you can process things yourself, so that you can build a life and a future that you want based on what is true to you, what is aligned to you, not what is aligned to anybody else, what, not what anybody else forces onto you. You got to use this, my friend. Until then, I'll see you on the next video.